This is Eyewitness News Up Close with Diana Williams. Three Queens politicians setting their sights on Washington. This morning, a conversation with Democratic candidates for New York's 6th Congressional District in Queens. Good morning and welcome to Up Close. I'm Diana Williams. We are continuing this morning with our series of conversations with the candidates in next month's New York congressional primary. One of the most closely watched races is going on right now in Queens. It's for the redrawn 6th congressional district covering the central and northeastern part of that borough. Most of the area is represented, represented by Congressman Gary Ackerman, who is retiring. With no incumbent in the race... This is a wide open contest. And joining us this morning are three candidates who are running in the Democratic primary. They are Elizabeth Crowley, city councilwoman from Glendale. Also Grace Meng, New York State Assemblywoman from Flushing. And Rory Lanceman, who is the Assemblyman from the Hill Crest Fresh Meadows area. Good to have all three of you with us this morning. And I know it's a short timetable for this uh, race. The primary is coming up just about 12 weeks to kind of get going on this. So we're going to introduce you all this morning to the voters with a series of questions. So Great. thanks again for being here. Thank you. Thank so you. let's start off with what <clears throat> happened this past week. Um, President Obama saying that he supports same-sex marriage. The question for many, though, now is where do we go from here? Right now, the issue in the hands of individual states. And as you know, some states supporting same-sex sex marriage, including New York State, other states not. So my first question for you all is, is this a state's issue or is it a federal issue? And then what would you do regarding the Defense of Marriage Act? So Elizabeth, let's start with you. Well, I think that it's a state issue. I think that uh, I support, I know I support gay marriage, uh, marriage equality. I, I look at it as an equal rights. Uh, and I think that we need to make sure that every state uh, takes it their same way. They, they also uh, you know, determine that state by state. I do believe so that. So state by state. But then what about the Defense of Marriage Act? I think that, um, you know, I believe that uh, the president supports gay marriage and I think that, you know, it's going to be tough right now for him to convince the, you know, representatives in Congress throughout the country that it is something that they should all get behind. Okay. Grace, what about you? Um, I definitely think it is a state issue. However, I think that President Obama coming out publicly in support of marriage equality is wonderful and will be a great source of encouragement to the states. Uh, I actually have a family member who is gay, and so I've listened to a lot of the experiences that he has had to come through. Um, I personally was able to have the privilege of voting in favor of marriage equality. And I think that if I were to have the privilege of uh, being a Congress member, I would support the repeal of DOMA because I think that it's, it's so uh, disheartening to know that people who love each other and who live just as other traditionally married couples are but can't uh, receive the benefits that everyone else receives. And Roy, what about you? Well, first let me say thank you for having me here, and, and Grace and, and Liz, it's, it's good to be with you. Um, this is a, a basically a civil rights question as, as I see it. Um, you know, we in New York passed uh, marriage equality uh, in the Assembly. We actually passed it several times until we finally uh, passed it for good uh, last year with Governor Cuomo's uh, leadership. And it was good to see the, the President come out finally in support of, of marriage equality because every American, just like every New Yorker, uh, deserves the same rights and, and privileges that every other American and New Yorker enjoys. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of the Defense of, of, of Marriage Act, I think it's very important that, that uh, wherever a person lives in, in the United States or wherever a person who might be married in, in New York uh, were to go to, that their marriage uh, be recognized um, and be treated on an equal basis with, with other Americans. But if you all truly support this, why leave it up to the states? Because as you know, 30 states right now have it on their constitutional amendments that they don't support gay marriage. So why not make this more of a federal issue? Why marriage is, has always been something that has been regulated by the states. Um, and you know, we have to be cautious uh, not to overreach and um, force uh, states to get to a point where, where they, I think all states will eventually be because it really could create a, a, a terrible uh, backlash. I, I think we need to start with, with the proposition that um, no state should refuse to recognize a marriage that is uh, solemnized in, 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 another, in another state. And, and that is a practical goal that we can have. But I have no doubt whatsoever that one day in the United States of America, um, uh, marriage equality will exist in, in, all, 50 in all 50 states, just as it does in New York. Okay. Um, 
Let me ask you about something else from this past week. More than half of New York's congressional delegation voted to punish the NYPD for spying on Muslim communities. So I wonder how would you vote um, if that were a proposal that was in your lap? And should the NYB, NYPD be punished or, or not? Um, and let's start, I'm going to kind of move around. Grace, what do you say on that? Well, first, I want to thank the uh, men and women in blue in New York State and of the NYPD who work so hard every day to make sure that our communities are safe. I think that um, I am not in favor of singling out anyone based on the way they look, based on where they come from, and based on who they, what they believe in. Um, that being said, I think there's a lot of room for improvement between building bridges and making sure that uh, the NYPD and the Muslim community here in New York truly understand each other and that's the best way to um, c increase communication. But and how, increase how would you have voted if that were put in your lap? Would you have voted with that delegation? Yes, I would have. You would have. Okay. What about you, Gordon? Well, uh, as someone who's proudly worn the uniform of this country, I was an infantry platoon leader in, in New York's own 42nd uh, Infantry Division and, and the author of five very substantial homeland security laws that I passed in, in the legislature to keep our cities uh, safe from, from terrorism. I, I take the issue very, very seriously. Uh, and, I, and I support, broadly speaking, uh, the NYPD's efforts to gather intelligence and make sure that they can stop and prevent the next terrorist attack. Uh, attack. But there seem to be some clear instances where the NYPD's tactics have raised questions. I mean, there was one example where the NYPD sent uh, an agent uh, on a rafting trip with a Muslim student association. It's hard in my mind to see how that would be justified. Uh, with that said, I, I think it would be a, a terrible mistake to um, punish, as, as you put it, um, the NYPD and our ability to protect ourselves um, by refusing to fund or, or support the So it sounds the like you would not have voted with this. I, I, I would not have, have voted for this. We need to take uh, anti-terrorism very, very seriously while at the same time focusing on those aspects of, of the, uh, the program that really are questionable. Okay. And what about you, Elizabeth? I, too, I would have, uh, as Rory has mentioned, voted no. I think most of the New York City uh, Democratic delegation supported this effort. What they said was that we would take money away from the NYPD, no federal dollars. How could we say that? We're still the number one target for terrorists, more so than any other place in the world. I'm proud to be uh, supported by the PBA, who represents uh, the police officers who risk their lives for our safety every day, the Captain's Union as well. They know from my work on the city council as the chair of the fire and criminal justice committee how important counterterrorism is and how they spend every single dollar they receive from the federal government whether it be in, for regular aid or homeland security we are not receiving enough funding mm -hmm. and we cannot vote to cut funding it's just absurd okay okay i want to move on to another question here signage in flushing I know you are all very familiar with the signage problem there. There's a multitude of signs, just so our viewers uh, can, can be up to date on this. A lot of signs in Flushing, none of them in English. There's a law in the books that says signs, in order for, for the fire department just to find a particular building, that some portion of a sign has to be in English. So this has been going on, not for six months, not for a year, but for two years. And the question I have for you is, and, and I understand that this comes down to um, enforcement. Who's supposed to enforce that? And is it the state? Is it the city? But two years is an awful long time to, to have this problem out there, and residents are really frustrated. So given that you've got gridlock in Congress sure. right now, how do you convince residents that if you go to Congress, if you can't fix a small sign problem in Flushing, how can you convince people that you're going to fix problems in Congress? And I'm starting with you, Roy. Sure. <clears throat> well, one of the things I and have... And you all are very familiar with this, correct? Sure. I, I certainly okay. am. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm very well known for is being able to go to, to Albany and get things done. I've passed 19 substan substantive laws on issues relating to homeland security and economic equality, and a lot of those laws were done with a Republican state senate. So I had to work in a bipartisan fashion and compromise, and, and compromise based then on Then why policy. hasn't this sign problem gotten fixed? Because well, it has gone up to the state level. Well, the, the, but there are some fundamental questions that are, that, are, that are at stake. I mean, this is America, and individuals uh, do have a right to 
display uh, their goods and, 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 and make their signs um, in a way that, that they want to. I mean, uh, if you were to go and look in the Lower East Side uh, uh, a, genera a few generations ago, you would have seen signs, and there are parts of the city where you can still see signs that are entirely in Yiddish or entirely uh, in Italian. So I think we need to be very, very careful about um, telling people and dictating to people how they will um, uh, display their But when it's their, a matter of public story. safety? Well, I, I think a legitimate public safety question would, could be resolved by requiring people to prominently display the address on their, their sign. And I think we need to be honest with ourselves and understand that this question, this issue, is not entirely about public safety. And as elected officials, we need to lead and, and be responsible for all the people that we represent, including people who don't always have a voice uh, okay. in well, government. Do you agree, Elizabeth? I think it is a public safety issue. And I think okay. that uh, you should have somewhere on the sign. And I think right now, English, you're on in the English, sign. right. And it should be approved by the Department of Buildings. Whether the sign is safe physically, you need a permit for a sign in the city. And they should make sure that on that sign, that as well, you know, as long as uh, it has some identification for the re emergency response team. Right now, our 911 call, call takers are having trouble getting information out. Uh, uh, and you know that's been on the news for a while and I've been critical of the administration right. because there are billions of dollars over budget now I believe that when an emergency call is put in you know mixed up information does go to the 911 call taker right but <clears throat> the issue here is is it's been taking mm -hmm. so long and this has gone to City Council too this issue. I think because the so issue is, is that people feel that their identity or their ethnic background is getting attacked as well, or the ethnicity behind the business. But uh, it's simple. I think that you just need a small writing uh, and, and for the address to be prominently displayed as well. Okay, Grace? Well, this issue, um, if I remember correctly, doesn't just span over the time of two years. It's actually uh, an issue that's been going on, at <coughs> least in the Queen, Northeast Queens area. Even longer, uh, For even longer, mm -hmm. uh, decades, actually. There has, there's actually a current state law on the books mm -hmm. that requires uh, English signage to be displayed. It's a little antiquated. Uh, for example, it doesn't apply to any businesses who are leased properties. And right. also, it doesn't specify which city agency would enforce it. Exactly, which has so, been the problem. Who's right. supposed to enforce the law that's already on the books? Right. So, so <coughs> again, why right. is nothing? Why, well, and how do you convince people you'll get something done right. in Congress? We, well, we were, are working on it. Um, I've been in office for three years. During the second year, our local council members introduced legislation that the Consumer Affairs Department uh, in New York City would enforce it, and they have a ratio of English to non-English uh, signage, lettering. Um, I recently have introduced legislation in the New York State Assembly also that gives authority to an agency, finally, to an agency that would be able to enforce it. Uh, some people, they're, they're, no one will ever be completely happy on this issue. Some people want the NYPD to enforce signage, which I don't think is necessary. But it's an issue of... Do you think it's um, a public safety issue? I do think it's a public safety issue. It's okay. two-pronged. One, it's a public safety issue. And one, we want to make everyone feel comfortable. And it increases business. It's good for the economy. Okay. We're going to have to take a break. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with our candidates for the 6th Congressional District here in New York right after this.